Welcome back to Switch to Linux, and it is Monday, and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we wanted to have a look at Debian versus Arch. Debian versus Arch. And uh, I've been running, of course, I usually live in the Debian world, and uh, so I've been doing a lot of things with Debian for my time in Linux. But I've also had a lot of experience with Arch, not a ton, but... Uh, I've used Manjaro, I've been using uh, Arch Labs for a few weeks now and uh, experimenting with a few different desktops, a few different setups and things like that. And so today I wanted to talk about Debian versus Arch top five uh, comparisons. And so the first thing we want to look at is packages. Uh, what is going to be your difference? Uh, your Debian packages versus your Arch packages. So starting with Debian. Uh, in Debian, all of the packages are going to be curated for the system. You can, of course, install third-party things with uh, .deb files. You can manually build things. All those types of things you can actually do. But as far as downloading something from the repositories, in Debian, everything is going to be curated. Everything is going to be audited by the team and everything should be free of any forms of malware and it should be free from errors for the most part. In Arch, you have, you have a basic curated package list, but then you also have extra add-ons like the Arch User Repository or AUR. In the AUR, it's basically a place for the community to upload different things uh, into the system. And so you will have a lot more packages to choose from. I mean, anything from tiny obscure stuff to giant builds of uh, Skype and Spotify and other things like that, you will find all those in the Arch user repository. However, there's a greater risk with those. And it will warn you when you turn that on that you know, these are not necessarily curated by the team. There have been some areas where we've seen things that could be considered malware placed into, uh, placed into your, uh, your Arch user repository. And some people have indicated that turning on the Arch user repository made their system unstable. I personally have never had that. Uh, I'm using, uh, I don't think I'm actually using anything from the user repository here, but I have in the past every time I've run Manjaro and a few other distros uh, based on Arch as well. And so uh, with that, your packages, uh, Debian is always going to have uh, more stable, more curated, more, um, uh, uh, more uh, consistent package base versus Arch. You have everything from the absolute latest and the greatest to things submitted by um, who knows who from who knows where. And that's uh, it's neither one of those is necessarily a good or a bad. It's just understanding the differences. Number two, installation. If you are new to Linux, you are probably going to want to stay in the Debian world for a little bit while you learn a little bit of the ropes. Installation is generally a lot easier. Uh, they have an easier installation process. Um, some of it, depending on if you're doing just, you know, basic, raw, regular Debian versus an Ubuntu base, which is in the Debian family, will have different types of installers. I think that the Ubuntu installers are a little bit easier than the Debian installers. But nevertheless, Debian will get you a, a very easy installation system with minimal, uh, minimal reading through all of the notes. You should be able to get a Debian system installed. Arch, depending on what you're doing, uh, so of course I'm running Arch Labs on my computer right now uh, for my media PC that gets changed to the desktop every, every few, uh, few weeks or so. And in that... The installation is easy, the Arch Labs installer is easy, but it is a command line tool. And if you're like, you, you are a GUI guy who wants a mouse pointer and a, to click around on things, you're probably not going to be as comfortable installing that. Now there are great installers. Um, uh, Manjaro is probably the best, uh, the best Arch that I have seen, Arch derivative based. Installation is very easy. Some people say uh, Antragos as well, although I've never, just never really been able to get the thing to work right. Um, there's some other installers, you know, that are easier and harder accordingly. But with your Arch family of systems, you generally are going to have to read a lot more documentation. You're going to have to try and figure some things out for yourself. 
In short, you're gonna to get to the point where you are gonna to have to be the one to figure out how to get the thing installed, and you're probably gonna to have to go into a terminal a little bit more than you are going to with the Debian family. Not that the Debian family is completely devoid of the terminal work. Which, by the way, if you're moving over to Linux, you're gonna to wanna to learn the terminal at some point in time anyway. You just don't necessarily want the crash course in it while you're attempting to install the thing. You like some stability before you have to get into there. Number three, let's look at the package versions. In Debian, you're gonna get older package versions. Now, this is not less secure, this is not problematic. It's just that in the Debian family, it's based on holding things back until everything is properly curated. So when you get a system st installed on Debian, it's going to be able to run better, longer, with fewer updates for the period of time. Now, this does not mean you're lacking security updates. You are gonna get all of the security updates as soon as those are available, and they push those security updates out very rapidly. A bug comes out, if a known fix and patch is there, it is going to be in your updater as soon as you run your updates next. You are not risking any security. What is happening and changing is the version. And this is one of these things that our modern computer world is moving towards is that this, we've been so trained by in the last few years, just constantly update, constantly update, constantly update. We don't realize that there's two types of updates that you get. One of these is package changes and feature changes and one of these is security. And this, this is a critical thing. So for example, I do my, I'm currently doing my images, thumbnails and all that kind of stuff on GIMP 2.8, which is the older version of GIMP. One of the things that I do on my banners is I will add, um, I will end up adding a, a, a bevel and emboss to my titles to give them more of a 3D look. It turns out that GIMP 2.10, the latest feature release, embev, uh, uh, embossing fonts is broken. It doesn't work. That means I can't actually do the graphics on this channel on GIMP 2.10. Just can't. I'm okay with the security updates. I'm keeping my system on GIMP 2.8 for as long as I can. That's what Debian is going to do is it's going to hold back the feature updates so that you never have to learn a new package. Things are never going to change around, but you're going to get the cumulative security updates. Arch is a little bit different in that you are always getting the latest feature updates. So in the Arch world, if I've got GIMP on the computer and tomorrow GIMP releases 2.11, you better believe in about two or three days when I run updates, I'm getting GIMP 2.11. Versus on a Debian, it doesn't matter if 2.10's out, Debian is still packaging 2.8. Now there are legitimate reasons to have the older versions. Just because it's the latest feature upgrade does not mean somebody's always going to want to use it. And that's really this difference between, uh, between the Debian family and, and the Arch family. There are absolutely places, roles, and situations you need, absolutely need those latest packages. You want to be running Arch. But if you need a very consistent system that's never changing, never altering your workflow, you need to be in the Debian family. And that's actually how I use my computers. That's one of the primary reasons all my production computers are based on Debian. That's also why I have another computer which constantly changes the desktops so that I can learn the differences and the nuances. This gives me the perfect testing ground to find these bugs like 2.10 to know that mm, I can't do 2.10 on this computer at this point in time. And so Arch and Debian are different in those respects. You need to understand those differences. And again, it's not this is better because or whatever. It's what is your workflow? What do you need? And it's great that we have the choice in the Linux world. Number four, the communities. Oh boy, the communities, people. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as far as the communities are concerned, if you are learning Linux and you're trying to get things figured out, you want to stay away from Arch. Uh, you want to live in the Debian family, uh, mostly because every branch operates a little bit differently and there are community uh, communities surrounding help and support with these things. You, there's not this paid support outside of Red Hat. You're not gonna have these paid support plans where you can call somebody up and get the help. 
but there are extensive amounts of forums and help guides out there. In the Debian world in general, whether you're on Debian, and it's very true that Debian forums are very cordial places. The Ubuntu forums are awesome. The Mint forums are awesome. They are great places. Even as a newbie, you can ask questions and they'll either point you towards where the answer is or they'll answer it. You go and ask a newbie question on Arch Forum, you're going to get a response. It says RTFM. And you're like, what's that mean? Well, it actually contains some words I don't say on this channel. It's read the F manual. The problem is the manual is kind of like that that kind of kind of like that joke, right? So there's this helicopter pilot and he's he's uh, training this guy. He's a he's a pilot in training. He's coaching this this assistant pilot. They're flying their helicopter through Seattle airspace and all of a sudden all the cockpit lights go out. Everything's done. The instrumentation is done. Fortunately, the helicopter is still flying, but they got no idea where they are. So they see this, this tall building and there's a board meeting or something going on. So the guy gets this, this big paper and he writes, where are we? And holds it up to the helicopter. The people in the boardroom look at this. They grab the board. They write up, you are in a helicopter. And in 15 minutes, they are safely on the ground. So the co-pilot says to the pilot, how in the world did you know where we were from that instance from the board meeting? And he says, well, I knew that had to be the Microsoft building because only computer engineers would give, you, would give you information that is completely accurate and totally unhelpful. And that's how the manuals are for some of these things. I, I read man pages. I can't figure them out. I go and look on Stack Overflow instead. That's the reality. So when you go and you have a question, you're trying to, you're excited, you're gung-ho, you're going to learn Linux, you go and install Arch because you hear Arch is the best because of the elitist Linux guys. Like, oh, you're a Debian, you should go to Arch. <laughs> okay, and then you're like, all right, fine, I'm going to go to Arch. And you have a question, you ask the menu, and they say, RTFM. It's not helpful. It's not helpful. The bottom line is if you are looking for answers, you want to be in the Debian family. If I wouldn't go near the Arch forums with a 15-foot pole. All you're going to get is RTFM, RTFM, RTFM. I, I, I did RTFM. Your manual ain't clear, yo. And that's kind of the difference in the communities. The Debian community is way better and way more friendly than the Arch community. That's not to say the Arch community doesn't have some helpful people and the Debian community doesn't have some jerks. It's just you have a greater propensity of encountering the jerks in the Arch forums than you do in the Debian forums. And so you have to understand the radical difference in the communities, the way the communities work. The Debian world is happy to help new people on for the most part. The Arch community, they just want to be snuck up in elitist. And if you install Pat, uh, Pomoc on your system so you have a GUI package manager, they yell at you. I mean, come on. That's, uh, that's just a reality of where the communities happen to be. And it's just, again, you might need that, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to defend the art community here. I really can't. So that is a radical difference. Number five, let's talk about performance. Um, this is definitely a, an area. Now, I run, like I said, my production computers are all Debian derivatives. I use Linux Mint Cinnamon as my main production computers. Uh, for my, you know, moderately spec systems, I use Peppermint for my lighter spec systems. And those work absolutely beautifully for me. Uh, I don't have any issues, I don't have any problems, I don't have any problems with stability. Everything works out of the box exactly the way I need it for the way I get my work done. Okay, there are some advantages that I see in Arch. Um, so right now, again, all my production PCs are running, uh, are running the... Um, uh, the Debian branches, but my media PC right now is running an Arch branch. Some of the things about these, uh, Arch works way better out of the box with codecs without installing them. Most of your distros, be it Debian or even the Fedora branches, they are not going to install your codecs out of the box. That means if you want to have a good experience dropping a DVD in there and watching a movie or listening to music, it's not going to be as good of an experience without installing the codecs. So, most of the distros make it easy to install those. It's not exactly rocket science. Arch, out of the box, at least the Arch I'm using with Arch Labs, everything worked out of the box. It was one of the first times I didn't have to do any extra steps. On top of that, I'm noticing that for the most part, the media doesn't stutter as much as it does on some older Debian systems. Everything seems to be working a little bit better. Not like 
tons, tons. It's not light years better because everything that I'm doing works perfectly fine with media anyway. However, we get to this point where uh, I am noticing that there are some niche places where Arch does perform better. The other place Arch will perform a lot better for you is on if you are a person using some of the latest cutting edge software, or excuse me, hardware. The latest cutting edge hardware, you might need a higher kernel. The kernel, remember, in Linux is what actually contains your drivers and your interfacing with your hardware and your software. So the latest kernels generally will support the later hardware a lot better than the older kernels do. For example, I love Linux Mint. It's the main system I have. But if you go with the latest generation of Ryzen processors, Linux, even the newest Linux, 18.1, Linux Mint 18.1, will not work well on that hardware. It will work. It just won't work well. The reason is you need at least kernel 4. I think it's 4.17 or 4.18 to support the latest Ryzen processor. So you'd have to install Mint, and then you'd have to go in and install an extra kernel if you want to run Linux Mint. Now I'm running Debian, uh, excuse me, I'm running a uh, Ryzen 5 1600, which is not one of the latest, and it seems to be supported just fine by my current kernel. Now, if I wanted to use that latest Ryzen and I didn't want to take that extra steps, the kernel on the media PC right here is already at 4.20. This is going to support every new hardware that exists. Um, this computer even has a Broadcom wireless card. I didn't have to fight with the wireless. It appears to be working. I don't test, I don't really use it on that computer, but it does appear to be working. Everything out of the box seems to be working a little bit better in Arch. So if you are encountering a problem where a piece of hardware isn't working, you might try out Arch. Um, whether that be Manjaro or whether that be an Arch Labs or some other version or derivative of Arch. So there's places where your hardware is better supported on Arch because it has the latest kernels versus Debian. If you got an older PC, maybe it's three years old, five years old, and this is just your PC, you love your PC and you just want to get a better system on it, I would probably move toward Debian in that case especially if you're new to Linux because you're not going to have to fight around with the communities and, and some of the other factors and features. So that is kind of a little bit of my experience running Debian and running Arch for a period of time. Five distinct differences and, and, uh, in how that those systems run. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.